In this video, we learn an overview more recent develop uh, deep learning architecture such as Google Net, ResNet, DenseNet, and at the end, UNet for image semantic segmentation. Google Net introduced by researcher from Google in 2014, and they won the ImageNet challenge by proposing a structure which combined the advantages of network in network and also paradigms of repeating blocks. One focus of the paper was to address the question of which size of convolutional neural networks are the best. Like previously, we discussed networking network use one in one, while the AlexNet used the 11 in 11. Now in this paper, they open the discussion, sometimes having a, like a, not only one in one network, having a different size of the kernel and combining all of them may be benefit and also uh, like will in, improve the result. The basic convolution of the like in Google Net named the uh, inception the like. As depicted in this figure, the inception block consists of four parallel paths. The first three paths use a convolutional layer with window sizes of uh, one in one, three in three, and five in five to extract the information from uh, different spatial sizes. And the middle two paths, as you can see here, perform a one-in-one -one convolution on the input to reduce the number of channels in the beginning and also reducing the model complexity. And the fourth path uses a three-in-three -three max pooling layer, follow a one-in-one -one convolutional layer to change the number of channels. And finally, the output of, uh, uh, of each pass or concatenate up along the each channel dimension and comprise a block output. To gain some intuition for uh, why this network works so well, consider the combination of the filters. They explore the image in a variety of the filter sizes, which means that the detail at different extent can be recognized efficiently by a filter of the different sizes. And also at the same time, we can allocate different amount of the parameter for different filters. Google Lenet architecture composed of 22 layer and it connects multiple well-designed inception blocks with other layers in series. The ratio of the number of channels assigned to the inception block is obtained uh, according to the experiment and has. Uh, the Google Lenet architecture achieves promising results not only for image classification and for other tasks as well, such as image detection, object recognition, domain adaptation, and even model compression. Another important point about Google Net architecture is this network is very efficient compared to other uh, network architecture, uh, which proposed until 2014. Uh, it needs less parameter and like a uh, computational complex complexity is lower here. In a uh, section three of the paper, they explain the motivation and this consideration very well. In this figure, Google Net architecture uses a stack of in total nine inception blocks and global average pooling followed by a fully connected layer. They use a max pooling layer between the inception block in order to reduce the dimensionality. The first module is also similar to AlexNet and Lenor. Residual network for short resonant introduced by climbing here machine learning researcher from Microsoft. The title of paper is Deep Residual Learning for Image Recognition and it accepted in uh, CPPR 2016. Deep neural network tends to provide more accuracy by having uh, more layers, but as we go more deeper in the network, the accuracy of the network can decrease instead of increasing. As more layers are stacked on the top of each other, we will see a problem like a vanishing gradient. And the ResNet paper proposed and addressed this problem by normal initialization and intermediate uh, normalization layer. Another problem is like with the increase uh, in depth, the accuracy gets saturated and uh, therefore we will see the degrade rapidly. 
Well, this degradation indicates the increasing the model layer does not aid and help uh, for the performance of the model. And therefore also it is not really, not all the systems are easy to be optimized. Therefore this paper again addresses the, uh, the degra degradation problem by introducing the deep residual learning framework. Theoretically, we could build very deep network architecture as our network can learn and pick up beneficial information and pattern and also escape those that not improving the performance automatically. Assuming the beginning, we have the um, deep network architecture with the function of F, where the F is a set of the hyperparameters such as learning rate, weight, biases, and so on. Then by adding a new layer, indeed, we change uh, our uh, like main function of f is slightly different from the beginning. Like, like we added a set of uh, hyperparameter like weight and biases to the our earlier function. And adding the third layer and more layers, in, it means like we adding a more uh, like parameter to the earlier function. And assume we have the FS star, which is the truth function, and we would like to be, by training at this network, we would like to be more close to FS star, which is a truth function. And we would like to minimize this set of function to be more closer to FS star. But something which is happening is like, uh, we would like to minimize this set of the function, which is with a lot of hyperparameter, but we are not successfully to do this because the gradient even could not uh, reach the stack, uh, the whole stack, and we are not really minimizing the error. And uh, sometimes we have, instead of having such a nested function, we have not nested function of the classes. And even we are uh, getting, by adding a new layer, we are getting uh, moving, away from our uh, truth function or our goal, uh, which is here f star. What we do here is like we minimize the error of, of the set of the function of f of x and uh, we actually indeed minimize of the f of x equal to be zero. But the idea of the residual block is quite different and brilliant. They here, the idea is in a set of solving a complex function of fx equal to be equal zero and optimizing this uh, complex function in a set solve the problem of fx equal x, which is uh, actually indeed simpler. Why? Because if we have uh, all the weights and like the parameters uh, learned very well, and if we uh, if the output of the like uh, this layer uh, be the input for the next layer, indeed we need to only solve the problem of fx equal x, which is the identity function, and solving this problem is much easier. This is a really brilliant idea, and indeed by uh, solving this, we escape a certain layer which is not useful and they do not have impact for uh, performance in our network. And also indeed in, uh, in this situation, we somehow like um, uh, skip the overfitting uh, as a problem as well. Here is the difference between a regular block in the left followed by uh, like a residual block in the right. As you can see here in a, like a regular block, we have a, an input and then which we pass it to the several layers. Each layer has a like activation function. And indeed we have like f of x and we would like to minimize f of x by solving the problem of uh, f of x equal to be zero. But uh, like uh, the situation in uh, residual block is quite different here. Here we have the input uh, which we pass it to the uh, like a set of layer, and afterwards uh, in a set of solving of uh, and optimizing f of uh, x equal to be zero, we solve indeed problem of f of x equal x. Indeed, here we uh, actually optimize f of x minus x, and if we get the minimum error here, we pass this information to the next layer, and if not, this information uh, really uh, good and beneficial for our performance, we skip this layer and, uh, uh, and again pass our input to the next set of the function, and uh, like we learn the information of the data like this.
And here we can see the detail of the residual block proposed in the paper. Here is two different residual blocks. We have the input, which we pass this to the tree in tree convolution. And then we have the batch normalization, as explained by uh, my colleague in the previous uh, sessions. And then we have the nonlinearity, which they use the redo activation, another convolutional layer, and another batch normalization. And then, uh, like here, uh, we have the minimize the, this uh, function of f, f of x minus x. Here, indeed, we change the thing if not changing thing is the best thing to do. Uh, like the, this type of the ResNet can be also be in, like as you can see in the right side, here we have the, uh, like uh, uh, our input can be uh, passed to the 1D convolution and then added to the next block of the ResNet. In this part, I explain why we call this uh, type of learning residual uh, learning. Assume we have the H of X, which is the optimal underlying mapping uh, that we need to learn during the training process, or at least this is the part of the network which we need to discover and learn. And here, X is the input layer. X can be the raw data from the input, or it can be in the middle of the uh, input and the output from the previous layer. And H of X here is the output from the layer of the L, something in between. Then here, instead of fitting H of X, the problem is to the network needs to learn the residual mapping. Indeed, here we need to optimize the function of F of X equal to H X minus X here. Uh, well, uh, here X is added via the identity mapping as we explained in previous slides. Therefore, here uh, we need to optimize h of x equal f of x plus x. Well, therefore, the model only needs to learn the f of x, which is the residual mapping. And we call this process residual learning because we need to only learn this residual information. Here we need to learn the element wise addition uh, of the like a residual of f of x uh, and also the identity uh, mapped uh, data of x, which require to these two function needs to be in the same dimension to allow for the downsampling with the with the like f of x using the like a those downsampling layers such as pooling. Uh, well, the author introduced the projection layer of the WS, which here we are somehow ensured that x for the same dimensionality as f of x and indeed here we have the y which is the output of the escape uh, module and our uh, like w is, is, is like the uh, represent the weight of the matrix of the linear projection indeed like here we added this ws to like these two functions be in the same dimension we do also similarly for the fully connected layer uh, as well. And here the residual mapping can learn the identity function more easily, such as pushing the parameter in the weight uh, layer to be zero. And also we can train the effective deep neural network by having the residual block. And this ResNet nowadays is a, like a, a standard convolutional model, which since 2050 successfully applied for the different domain uh, of the deep learning uh, model, because it is fast and learning and parameterizing the network is quite a straightforward. We have different ResNet architecture where they are different with the number of the layer and number of the residual block that they use. Here you can see the ResNet 18, then input passes to the, the convolutional with the filter size of seven, followed by a batch normalization. And after that, we have the max pooling with the size of three. Then we have set of the, uh, like a residual block in residual block and three, different residual block here we have like for example after the second residual block we have residual block with the 1d convolution followed by a normal uh, again residual block and we have three times this situation and uh, at the end we have a global average frame followed by fully connected layer and the last function 
And like the difference, as I mentioned earlier, is with the number of residual blocks that we have. We have, for example, rest 150, which has uh, like a more residual block, of course. Then set architecture proposed one year after uh, RESTAT architecture by a researcher from Cornell University and uh, Facebook AI. Here, the title of paper is uh, Densely Connected Convolutional Neural Network, and the motivation is quite similar to the ResNet. I mean, they started to solving the problem of the, like, uh, when we are going uh, deeper with the CNN, uh, the information and the amount of the information which passing through the, the different layers uh, makes the, like, uh, uh, optimizing the network hard, and uh, we can see the, like, a vanishing gradient in uh, our network. Here, the authors uh, indeed solve the problem by ensuring the maximum information flow or like the old gradient flow when the training our network. And to this end, they simply connect the, every layer directly with each other. Similar to ResNet architecture, the DenseNet architecture also composed of the smaller blocks and uh, the name of the block here is the dense block and uh, each layer is connected to every other layer in forward fashion and uh, in order to alleviate the vanishing gradient by like a uh, like feature propagation and encouraging the feature to uh, to be used again and again the rest of the architecture optimizes a function of f of x equal to x, uh, but the dense net architecture expands this idea and they recall the Taylor expansion for the function and they optimize this series of the function. As you can see here, for the point uh, of x equals zero, we can uh, rewrite the Taylor expansion like this. And uh, here, as we mentioned, in the like um, uh, dense net architecture, indeed, we optimize that f of x equal x plus g of x, where the g of x itself is a series of the function. Well, the motivation, another motivation by the, by the dense net uh, paper uh, actually is the uh, rest net decomposes f into the a similar linear term and a more complex nonlinear one. And they said, like, what if we want to capture more necessary features and information, then uh, because of this reason, they actually uh, decided to pass more information from one layer to another layer and uh, do the, the similar for the all the layers. Here is the difference between the dense net, uh, rest net architecture and the dense net architecture. Uh, another big difference, as you can see here, is like we have, like uh, we adding the residual uh, um, to the next block or next layer. However, in dense net architecture, we concatenate this feature and passing them from one layer or one block to another block. Here, indeed, we perform a mapping uh, from x to its value after applying an increasing complex sequence of the function. As you can see here, we first uh, like having uh, x, and then uh, for the first function, we have f1 of x. For the f2 of x, we have f1 of x and x itself. Uh, for the f3, we have x, f1 of x, f2 of x, where the f2 uh, itself uh, composed of x and f1 of x. And as you can see here in this figure, how we actually concatenate this feature after uh, one layer to another layer. And it, uh, in the end, all these functions are combined into a multi-layer perceptron in order to reduce the number of features again. And uh, in terms of implementation, this is not a really difficult. And uh, we only concatenate this feature. And the naming of uh, this uh, network architecture as a dense net is uh, in uh, the fact that the dependency group between variables become quite dense. And the last layer of such a chain is like densely connected from the, all the previous layers. Therefore, they call it dense net. The unit architecture proposed by Ronenberger et al. in 2015. The title of paper is Unit Convolutional Network for Biomedical Image Segmentation. 
the character accepted in Mikhail 2015, and since that time, it's a standard uh, network architecture for image segmentation, not only for medical area, but for other domain as well. As we mentioned earlier and explained in a convolutional application, the unit architecture is an autoencoder. It comes uh, composed of the encoder and decoder part. Both parts uh, actually compose and include fully convolutional neural network, but uh, like different to the autoencoder, they use also a skip connection here. Well, the escape connection is used in the, the decoder part where it helps to and, uh, and also combine the feature map from the earlier layer and pass them to by concatenating them to the set of the feature map in order to having more information. Here is the illustration of a unit architecture. Uh, well, it has uh, two parts, uh, the encoder and decoder. All the layers are fully convolutional neural network where the network takes high resolution macroscopic images as an input. Uh, well, the size of images is uh, 512 and 512. And uh, for the next, uh, they use in the beginning, like um, kernel size of 64 in 64, and then they pass the uh, 256 in 256 with the like uh, uh, kernel size of 120. Then for the third layer uh, and the fourth layer, as you can see, and then uh, in the last layer of the encoder part, they use like 32 in 32 feature map, and then we have the uh, like. Uh, bottleneck feature, which is like the 1024. Then in the decoder part, we perform the upsampling convolution. And more importantly here is at the upsampling and also like the decoder part, we also pass some information from encoder and use this information with the escape connection and pass them and concatenate them with the decoder information in, uh, in the upsampling part. But in the beginning, they use also a dropout uh, layer, I mean, uh, exact limited after the bottleneck. They use first the uh, uh, like the wrap-up layer, and then they start the upsampling uh, operation. Well, here is one uh, like uh, example where the network takes the, the it's like a, the pixel by semantic segmentation of the satellite images. Here is the input, and the output is semantically segmented in a space. I mean, here is the network prediction. This is the grand truth, and when we like uh, overlay the predicted on the top of our input, we can see how exactly uh, accurate is the semantic segmentation. Note that like uh, in uh, image segmentation, usually we use RGB image. Here we have like a three channel, but like the output is like a, a one channel image, but the size uh, uh, like from the width and height, we exactly produce the images with a similar size. The model itself, I mean, the unit architecture can be trained using the binary cross entropy loss or categorical cross entropy loss function. And here is the references which we use for this uh, part of our lecture. Thank you for your attention.